So this is Kusolin. It's a small piece of land that we bought about six, mo six months ago. We are in uh, Burgundy, in France. And I will explain you the different observations we made over the last year, to summarize. And also, what's the project here? What, what do we want to do? So, it's a small 2,000 square meter piece of flat land with a kind of triangle shape. And uh, it's a surrounding by a surrounded by a hedge all around. There is a big oak there, another oak, an apple tree, an apple tree, and a couple of hazelnut and uh, willow trees behind me. I'm just standing on the limit on the of, of the plot. We bought this land for 5,500 euros, including 100 euros of notary fees. The previous owner told us that Kusolin had been plowed in the past to grow potatoes, but for the last few decades, it had been it just had been a grass a grassland grazed by cows. And now it's, as we can see, it's just only surrounded by meadows grazed by cows. The south is this tip there. Uh, so during winter time, the sunlight comes from that point uh, as we are located in the northern hemisphere. There is a high voltage power line that we, we don't see very well on the background, but it's far enough so I cannot detect any electric field from uh, here. On the east side, where the sun rises, there is a little road just behind the hedge, S uh, but it's very uh, only very few cars pass by every day, and from time to time, a hiker stops by to chat a little bit. On the north side, just behind me, there is a um, little pass, and on the west side, there is a uh, intermittent river just on our side on the land. Overall, so it's as you can see, it's really a quite a peaceful place. It's most of the time very pleasant to work here. So, and then what about um, main observations like soil, weather, sunlight, wind, wildlife? Uh, for the soil, the soil texture seems to be kind of a silty sandy, so it's usually considered good for growing vegetables. But after one year of observation, I realized that there is a clear fertility gradient from the west to the east. On the west side, where the river flows, the soil is, is uh, quite dark, about 20 cm deep, has a lot of earthworms and holds moisture quite well, even during summertime. But the more we go towards the east side, farther from the river, the more the soil appears to have a coarser texture, is much less dark, gets dry very fast after f just a, f a couple of weeks without rain, and tends to get compacted very easily. So overall, I realized that it's, it's much more fertile on the west side rather than on the east side. In terms of weather, we have a kind of continental, continental weather, temperate, climate, with cold winter, hot and dry summer, and overall about 1000 mm of rainfall per year. The river generally flows from the start of November to the end of May, so it's very convenient if we need to water in spring, but we don't have water from June to August. In terms of sunlight, um, as you see, the the landscape is, is kind of an open landscape. So except those trees, the sun is direct. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, solar radiations in summer, but fortunately this big oak and even this uh, maple, they are creating some uh, move, moving shadow, especially on this north part of the land, less on the south part. So this shadow is quite nice, especially in the in the summer. In terms of wind, overall, um, because of this open landscape, I realized there is a very strong southwest wind wind entering the land. Uh, it's kind of a dominant wind, and it tends to be cold in the winter. So I realized that in spring, it made the plants uh, these uh, sweet plants we planted here. Uh, they started to wake up about one to one and a half months later than in more protected areas close to this to here so it's 
it's really not neg negligible. And in summer, instead, the, um, there is a, a dry, the, the, this wind is dry and tends to dry the plants very fast, especially on this uh, east uh, side, which cannot hold water very well. In terms of wildlife, um, as there are not many trees in the area, I hear very few birds compared to other closed areas where there are more trees. Over the past years, I saw one wild, I saw sometimes wild boar and deer tracks on the pass just behind me, but I haven't seen any such track on the land itself. On the land, um, I, I had, I observed uh, animal paths in the grass, probably rabbits, hares, maybe foxes. And last year when we arrived, I, I saw a lot of koi poo, poo along the river. But it seems they, they have left, it seems they didn't really like our company. So then what's the, what, what's the idea to develop on this uh, land? Uh, the project, depending on the, these observations and the... Um, and uh, our what we want to do, the project is ideally to to check um, which amount of food, biomaterial, and firewood we can grow, and to see uh, how many people could be sustained. Like, could we some sustain, for instance, a small family on such a small land with a, a forest garden, or could we? Would it be enough for one person, one farmer, to earn a living? So, to try to experiment on this idea, to try to check this, um, I, I designed uh, a, a rough project that is on this page here. So, if you see, the, it's exactly the, the right size of the land with the triangle. This tip is that tip, and then the east, hedge, the west hedge with the blue the blue river is there. So what we can see uh, first of all is like I really want to try to bring the water everywhere on the land by creating a small channel leading to a pond and then back to the river. This is to, to try to bring moisture, more fertility and easy access to water for any from anywhere on the land and especially with a pond in the middle so it will be behind this area around there a pond to try to save water for the to try to maintain water over the dry months of the summer in terms of access i thought about a little parking here close to the road and from this parking a, a trail, uh, a track going to one and a second glade, basically to be able to reach any part of the land. Um, the tr this track, the glades, they would be just grassland. And then what's not in a grassland or water is, uh, would be many, many, many uh, it would be like the forest garden. So rows of fruit trees um, basically separated by rows of vegetables. Yes, so this is the, the plan. Um, as you see these squares, it's because I also want to see how to, to grow living architecture, places where we could store tools for instance, in this one, and even a kind of tiny house here, but made of living architecture, uh, living plants, because I really want to see what we can, what we could make out of just a food forest, a, a forest garden. To experiment this design, we started by planting a first mini forest garden around a first glade. So it's this circle that you see with a lot of um, Jerusalem artichoke. So we planted that uh, six months ago and in the uh, next video I will explain you a little bit the design, uh, what we did, what worked and what didn't work. See you next time.